in today's video, I'm gonna be talking you through a simple system you can use to organize all of your clients in private practice. This one spreadsheet will help you keep track of your inquiries, a waiting list if you want one, all of your current client information, and also your past clients. We're gonna jump into my computer so you can take a look at what it looks like and how it works. But first of all, for those of you who don't know me, hi, I'm Kim. I help therapists in private practice get online, get confident with admin, and reduce tech overwhelm. I'm also gonna have this master client list template in the description below and you can download that for free so that you can use it in your practice right away. Let's jump in. Hi there, today I'm gonna to be showing you my master client list template. This is on Google Sheets, but you can also work on Excel as well. So I'm gonna take you through the tabs and the information that I capture for my clients. Um, you can get your copy of this for free by heading to the comments below and um, I'll leave the link for you there. So the first tab on my master client list template is the inquiry tab. I think it's really important to keep a list of all of your inquiries, even if you don't end up taking new clients on. Um, it's really good to know whereabouts you are getting your inquiries from. So whether you're getting it from a referrer or a directory or your website, just to see what's working and what's not. So the things we capture on the inquiry tabs, I've got here name, email, the referrer or directory, the date the inquiry came in, an intro date if you gave them an introductory call or something like that, whether they converted into your practice or not, and any notes about the client that you want to add there. So I think it's really good to keep a list of everyone that you are getting an inquiry for, and then you can add things like filters, by going to like data, create a filter. And then once you've got some data in here, you'll be able to filter and see um, when you were getting your inquiries. So maybe you wanna see a list of how many inquiries you got in June, or maybe you want to see how many inquiries you got from Psychology Today, for example. Having this is really key because then you can look at where you are marketing your practice and whether that is getting you any inquiries. Let's say that you have a social media presence on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn maybe. You wanna see where your inquiries are coming from to know whether your efforts that you're putting into your marketing is working or not. So that's why it's good to keep an inquiry tab. And you can just keep this going and going and going and going um, for as long as you want. So that's how you would fill that information in there. So basically it's just fill in one here and then you can just keep that going like that. So that is how you would just fill in that information. It's all set up for you. So you can just type the information in there. Then we move on to the waiting list. If you do want to have a waiting list for your practice, you can have a tab for that. So basically you would copy and paste the information from the inquiry tab. So you can copy all of these uh, A to E and paste them here. And then what you can do is add on some more information. So on my template, I've got primary concern, their availability, and then some notes. Maybe you work with different concerns and you only want to have a certain number in your practice at any one time. So that is gonna make a difference whether you take them on or not. Maybe you do something like EMDR, but you only want to work with a certain number of clients doing EMDR at one time. So if this client has an EMDR and another client doesn't, then that would decide whether who was gonna come in first. The availability is also really important because you want to know when their availability is. Let's say you have a Monday at four o'clock become available, but you can see here that certain clients don't have that availability. You know not to even bother offering it to them and you can offer it to the person who you think will be available. So it's another way that you can kind of cut down your email correspondence between yourself and potential clients by finding out when they are available. Obviously, if there's no one available specifically, you could email everybody on your list and just let them know that this space has come up and maybe one of them would be able to make it work. But um, it is a good way just to know who you think will be able to accept the space. Then it comes to the main tab. This is called my current clients tab. So here would be everybody that you're currently working with and having everything in one place so that you only ever need to go to one location to find out the information about your clients. So in this section here, you'll put the client's name. You can have a preferred name for them if you wanted to. You could also add a column in if you wanted to add pronouns and things like that. We have email and telephone number. We've got the same information that we have on the other tab, which is where they came from. So the referrer or directory they came from, the intro appointment date, if you had one with them, and then what their confirmed slot is. 
that's if you work that way. If you have conf confirmed slots for people and you see people regularly on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, you can have that in there. This is just a template for you. You can add and remove columns as they are necessary for your practice. Some people don't need all of these columns and some people want additional ones. So we can also have the fee on there what date you sent the contract and what date it was signed. I think that's really important because then you can see if there's any gaps in your practice. So you know you sent some contracts out, but they haven't sent them back yet. So it's a good way to note if you are waiting for something. I've then got, just scroll along here, I've got emergency contact name and emergency contact number, which we know is important, especially if you're working online with clients. Then if updates are required, and this is the section I was saying, maybe you don't need to do this, maybe you don't work with clients who have psychiatrists and things like that, but if you do, you can have an updates required column, so you can say whether you need to send updates, and also the date of the last update sent to doctor. You could also have in there the doctor that you need to update, so you can put that in there, and you you can also put in the date that the release of information was signed to. So to insert columns, what you'd want to do is we'll insert a column here and we'll add doctor to update. Date ROI signed. So that's the release of information so that you can uh, liaise and communicate with the doctor. And then you can have the date of the update last sent. So we've got that there. The next one here we've got is a third party agreement. If you work with certain client types where you would need somebody else to pay for their sessions and things like that, you can have that here. So you can say if somebody else is paying for their appointment. So we could put in yes and you could put again, if you work with this, we can insert another column invoice to be sent to and then we can have that there. So you can add in your column here. I have then got a column for client notes. What I've done here is if you click on this link, it's going to take you to the client file and their appointment notes details. So we've got intake details and you can again add whatever you want in here, whatever's important to you. And then we've got the appointment notes. So what you can do here is add the appointment. So we could start at the bottom. So today is the 20 for the 6, 22. And then you can add whatever notes you want here. So I'm just gonna you know, quite nothing basically. And then just work your way up as you have appointments with people so that the newest appointment is always at the top here. So you could create something like this and have an intake details and appointment details form, like a simple form, and then basically have a link to it in your client notes on the master list um, so that you can always just easily get to that when you've had an appointment with somebody. And again, we've just got a note section here. So this is the current client's details. And again, you can personalize this for what you require in your practice. Then what I've got here is a pause and discharge tab. Now this one needs to be exactly the same as the current client's tab so that you can just copy and paste the information. So obviously I've added in a couple of columns here. So I've added two columns in here, N and O. So after updates required, I've inserted two columns here. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that information. N and O. And I've also added in R, which is invoice to be sent to. So what you would do here is as somebody finishes working with you, you can just copy and paste their information and put them on the pause and discharge tab. And you can just keep this here for seven years um, just so you have records of them. And also if the clients come back, then you can have, you know, you've got the, some information on them. So I'm just gonna, just gonna fill in some information so that you can see what it looks like. I'll pause the recording, uh, so not to waste your time. Okay, so I filled in some information on of some uh, a new client I have so we've got the information here and this is what it looks like when it's filled in like that and then what you would do is let's say you stopped working with that person you could just copy that information paste it into the pause and discharge section and as you can see everything fills out exactly as it should so it all is in the right column so you've got the confirmed slot the fee all that kind of stuff the emergency contact open that up a little bit so you can see all of the information and then what you can do is update the status to say whether they were paused or discharged or something else different language you use in your practice so i'm just going to say that this client was discharged and then you can add any discharge notes that you want to put in there such as the date um client asked to stop therapy July 22, something like that. With a pause client, maybe you want to say, 
um, client asked to pause for two months, check in September 22, something like that. So you can add that information in there. And then what you can do is just delete the information from the, the current client tab uh, so that you've always just got your current clients on one tab and your pause and discharge on another. So you're not getting confused about who you're currently working with. So they are the four tabs that I use on my master client list template. As I said, you can personalize and update for what would work in your practice, but hopefully this can give you a good basis of where to start from to keep a list of everything that's happening within your practice from inquiry all the way to discharge. I really hope you found my overview of the master client list template helpful and something that you're excited to implement into your practice. Remember, you can get your very own copy. The link is in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.